It's Friday. Finally Friday. I see you in the chat room. I see all your shenanigans. Hurry up and get in there before the show starts. We will begin this stuff in moments. Finally, Friday is being brought to you this week by Major Spoilers VIP and Patreon members from around the world. Hey, if you find some value in any of the content that we produce for you, head over to patreon.com slash major spoilers and give a little back. Well, happy Friday, everyone. I hope you've got a good, hope you've had a good day. I've been busy most of the last two days. Shooting a project for a class. So I've been offline. You know, I, I, I've i barely been on Twitter. I opened the Twitter four different times, and it was like, what, what worldwide crisis is going on in each one of those four different chapters? I open it up, and there's one thing going on. Say, so, okay, well, that's going to be going on for a couple of days. Open it up in the evening. Something else completely is going on. This morning, same thing. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad that it is Friday. Right, Vince? 4044? He says the TGA, TGIF. I think that is uh, to GIF is what that stands for. Been busy, 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 busy. So much so that uh, we were recording new episodes of uh, podcast last night. Uh, we sat down and recorded a dueling review. Big shout out to all of you who showed up at uh, in the Discord to hang out while we recorded that. Then we recorded a new episode of Flashback because season six is now out. And if you are a patron at the $5 and higher level, that's the extras and more, you probably got to hear our conversation about the season of, of Flash, the, the premiere. And then after that, I had that at uh, this week's top five. Basically, I just put it together. Dan does a fantastic job of, uh, of recording and putting all the content together. And I just... Uh, I just master it, but I had to edit that. And then a new Legion Clubhouse is out today. I love the Legion Clubhouse. This is actually the last episode of Legion Clubhouse in this round of shows. Uh, but we're going to be recording another batch of 10 here fairly soon. And I really like Legion Clubhouse. And then after that, I don't know, for the last, what, couple of years? Every time I open up an application on my Mac, it says, Hey, this, uh, this application... It's only 32-bit. Doesn't support 64-bit. Click here, find out more. And I'm like, I don't care. Click. Just ignoring it. Just like every other developer and every other person in the world. Until the release of uh, Catalina, the new OS for your for your Macs. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I need to look into maybe upgrading that. That, that dropped this week. And it turns out I've got two applications that are not Catalina ready. The first one is Levelator, which, oh my god. That is a brilliant application. I hope somebody... It's an application that's dead. They stopped development of it, although there was a time not too long ago when there was a Mac update that broke Levelator, and I guess they got the guy to come out of retirement or whatever to update the, the app. But it's not 64-bit ready, so that is a must-have app for podcasters, and I'm sad to see that go. Unless somebody comes up with the 64-bit version. Then the other app that is not ready is uh, Cute FTP. That one on the Mac has been dead, I guess, for seven years. I just never upgraded it. It's just worth working fine. And there is no solution for the Mac except to get a different FTP program. The problem is... All of those... I don't have... The, I don't remember the... Don't remember the password. I'm gonna have to start digging around. I can't find the passwords for all the sites that I had in there. And it's not simply a copy-paste into another FTP program. It's kind of difficult to do that. So I've got like three sites, one of them being my own, that uh, I can't uh, remember the password for because it's just been in there. And so I can't upgrade to Catalina yet 
because uh, it's a 32-bit app, and when I upgrade to Catalina, everything will be 64-bit, and that application will no longer work anymore. So, uh, you know, I've just been kind of tooling around and was up way late last night after editing all the shows. It was midnight. I was going around looking for other applications that needed to be cleaned or updated or whatever. And then I didn't get to bed until way late or way early, depending on <laughs> how you view 1230 in the morning. Or 1230 at night, I don't know. But then, I forgot that my son, the cross-country runner, the soccer player, had his final cross-country practice this morning at six or 7 o'clock. No, 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 6 o'clock in the morning. Can't even get my own time right. He had to be there at 6 o'clock in the morning, and so I have to get up early. And so I had to get up at 4.30 just to make sure that everybody else was up and get myself ready for the day so that I could take him to cross-country practice in 27-degree weather. And then I came back home, and it was like 6, just a little bit after 6, after I got back home from dropping him off. And my wife was up, and the youngest was up, and so I sat down on the couch for just a minute to talk with her, and then she got up to go get the youngest uh, ready. And the next thing I know, she's shaking me going, it's 725, are you not going to take the boy to school, the youngest to school? I was like, oh my god, I, I dozed off there. I, I was listening to the news and just fell asleep. And then we've got to go out of town. I, I'm sorry for people who've been like, hey, what happened to the game streams that you guys have been doing on Saturdays? I haven't seen them in a month. It's because all month I've been busy with soccer or cross country or whatever. Next weekend is the last cross country, or next weekend is the last soccer tournament that we will have to go out of town for. So after that, we should be back to the game streaming. I guess what I'm saying is I'm tired. I am so, so tired of all the shenanigans, of all the technology, of... I, I guess I'm just... I've come to the point, and many of you who've been following Major Spoilers for years, know that uh, it, I was notorious, infamous, celebrated, for getting by on four hours of sleep. You know, it was routine for me to stay up until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, get up at 6 in the morning, and have a productive day. But in the last two years, man, I cannot do it anymore. I think it's ever since I started growing this beard, right? Maybe this maybe this is my kryptonite. Maybe I need to shave this off. What's going on here? What the heck is that? Ugh. Maybe do that. Does that work? No, it doesn't. I've got beard. I've got beard bedhead. Uh, yeah, just up until about two years ago, I could still stay up at two o'clock, get the four hours of sleep and go, but man, in the last two years, and especially in the last six months, it's like, oh my gosh, I am dead at 11, 30, 12 o'clock, and I have to go to bed. I think it is. I think it's zapping all of my strength. I think I need to shave it off here pretty soon. It's going to be a while, but it'll come off. My vitality will be restored, right? It's the reverse Samson. Right, where you, where you actually shave off your your beard and you get your strength back. So there's that. Uh, let's see, what what does somebody say here? Something about Catalina. Uh, the uh, oh, J. Michael T. says uh, my iPhone X is so messed up. I'm sorry, my iPhone 10 is so messed up after the iOS 13. I'm no way I'm upgrading to Catalina anytime soon. I'm still gonna wait because I a bunch of my plugins are still not updated. Um, I've got a bunch of plugins on Adobe, or sorry, Audition that I use that are not ready yet. And the company is like, you might want to hold off for a little bit. Uh, Adobe yesterday pushed out an update or a couple of updates that was uh, really, really nice. But I'm still not going to pull that trigger yet. Uh, I can't remember when the last time was... Um, I think the longest I went from a software update and, uh, you know, an operating system update was probably about a year and a half because of the um, back in the day when we had the uh, Ambrosia software with its little routing stuff. I couldn't update because the new Mac OS would have broken that. So I lasted for about a year without out updating to that to that OS. But I think in the next two or three months, 
I'm going to have to migrate everything over to Catalina, which I am a little nervous about, but there's also some things that I'm kind of excited about that I want to try. So I'm looking forward to that. Hey, look at all these people that are showing up in the in the chat. Shane is there. What is that? Egoose or Egos? Wayward Boy is there. Vince is there. Xanthus Eras. Oh yeah, there's uh, Kevin Eleven is in in the chat. The, is the great Nate Owen today? I saw him floating around on the Twitter, but I haven't seen him. Uh, I haven't seen him uh, pop up in the in the chat. Oh, Canadians! This Canadian Thanksgiving is three days away. Happy birthday, Canada! To top it all off, Monday it was like 90 degrees. This morning it was 27 degrees. Right now it's like 50, so it did warm up. Windy and cold. Bad. I hate it. As I was saying the the other night to the to the boys, not to my boys, the Critical Hit boys. Why does the best season of the year have to be right next to the worst season of the year? I love fall. Fall is the best. The colors change. The air gets a little cooler, not freezing, but it gets a little cooler. Something about the air just becomes crisper, and when people start to fire up their fireplaces, you get that smell in the air of fall. But winter, blah. Winter's the worst. I hate winter. Fall is the best. I guess some people don't agree. Some people think that winter is the best. I don't think so. I don't think summer is the best. Too hot. Especially this year. It's been hotter than ever. And I'm sure it's going to be colder than ever. One thing, though, about climate. Don't want to get off into a political climate change thing. But I have mentioned multiple times on Finally Friday, especially over the summer, how cool of a summer we had and how wet of a summer we had. It is the 11th day of October, and the grass is still green. The trees are still green, although I did see some of the walnut trees starting to turn yellow. Uh, the leaves starting to turn, like, a day or so ago. And the, um, I don't know what, uh, is it an elm tree? Must be some kind of an elm tree that turns purple. The leaves turn purple. They turned about a week ago. But in an area where we're mostly walnut and some, some oak... They haven't changed yet. They're just starting to now. And usually by this time, either one of two things have happened. Everything is yellow and brown, or everything has been frozen off and died from an early freeze. I can't remember... I can't remember a time where we have gone this far into October and the colors haven't changed yet. So that's, that's concerning. Look, look at all the people that are in there saying fall is the one. Kevin Eleven says, I gave blood last week. Took me a few days to get my energy back. Oh, yeah, we gotta go do flu shots. The boys are off for, um... Yeah, they call it Columbus Day. Indigenous People's Day, Columbus Day. The boys have off of school, so I've gotta go take them to get their flu shots. And I'll be honest with you, here, I, I mean, I can't... I, I don't know what I can say or what I can't say, but... Uh, let's just say that if you are someone who is an elderly, who relies on those high-dose flu shots, they've been kind of hard to come by. Regular flu shots doesn't seem to be a big deal, but if you're an, you're an elderly, that's what I'm going to call old people from now on. If you're if you're one of the olds, if you're one of the elderly, uh, man, you better you better call ahead to your, your doctor's office to see if they have those high doses, because it seems like they may be in short supply in many places. So yes, flu shots. We had a community flu drive last weekend, but of course I was out of town. So we didn't get it then. But Monday, I'm gonna all three of us are gonna go in and get our flu shots. My wife works at the hospital, so she's already got hers. <laughs> Shane, Shane Canada says, fall in Saskatchewan is an afternoon and then bang winter. Yeah. I don't know where you're at, Kevin Eleven, but uh wet summer, where are you at? Was it a wet summer for everybody? I mean, a lot of places. You know, we got, uh, what is it, the Saddle Ridge Fire going on in California right now. That's not a good thing. Oh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, you better go do it. I mean, you don't want to go get your flu shot too early. I mean, I'm not a doctor, so don't take any of my medical advice from what I said. But, I, but if you get it, like, in September, it's like that's a bad idea. But if you wait until, like, November, 
It's also a really bad idea. So you kind of have to wait until like mid-October, right about now, to go get your flu shot done. So don't wait. Everybody get your flu shot. It's not gonna it's not gonna make you lose your mind or anything. But go get that flu shot. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of people today. I think, was it today National Flu Shot Day? I don't know. Um, I know today was National Coming Out Day. But I saw an inordinate amount of people saying that they have, you know, stage four cancer or, uh, you know, some one of the cancers. And that uh, they rely on public immunity to keep themselves from getting sick. So the more of us that get immunized, the less of us are going to be sick and the less we're going to sp potentially spread those germs, that flu virus to people who maybe really cannot cannot uh, deal with something for most of us we would brush off. J. Michael T. says this is the time of year where we start getting reminders from the doctor's office. We had what year? Crops are still in the field. Yes, up until just a few days ago, uh, corn was still out here. And then silage. I don't know if, if that's really the word for it. I know somebody was growing. I'm pretty sure it's silage. Let me double check. Silage, grass, or other green fodder compacted and stored in airtight containers, uh, typically in silos without first being dried and used as animal feed in the winter. Yes, um, there was a bunch of silage that they had cut just yesterday, and it was still green. This is really weird. That's probably not weird, but... So what else is going on with you? I really didn't have a whole lot planned because uh, Ashley Victoria Robinson, the Ashley Victoria Robinson, Ashley V. Robinson on Twitter, was going to join me today. I didn't know I was coming apart. Uh, she was going to join me today, uh, but she got called in for an audition, which is great, right? Anytime you get called in for an audition, definitely dump this show and uh, go get a potentially career-changing career -changing job. Uh, so while my day today was just spent getting up, falling asleep, being incredibly tired, and then trying to edit this video together, which I'm almost done with. It'll go up probably not tonight, probably not tomorrow. It's, I wanted it to get up today, but I had some, some issues. But it'll go up. It's not a major spoilers thing, so you'll have to go find my personal YouTube page, and you can check it out there. Are you guys seeing any movies this weekend? I was hoping to go see the Joker movie. I know some people are like, hey, I don't want to see the Joker movie. That's fine. It looks like a fine little piece of cinema, even though it may not be related to the DC's Joker at all. But now with the boy going to uh, League Cross Country tomorrow, I'm going to be gone all day. And Sunday, I know I'm going to I have to do grading. So I'm not going to be available to go and see to go and see that movie. So it's probably going to have to wait until a um, digital release for me. Kevin Eleven says, Brought, bought a drone to play with. A little bit of video editing if I can. Well, it depends on what kind of drone you have. Be careful with that because also you said you were in Pittsburgh, so probably not as big of a deal. But I know in Canada, for Shane Canada, that's your name, right? Shane Canada. Uh, it's like you can't even fly it recreationally, a drone, now without... Uh, potential $5,000 fine. I've got my drone. I haven't flown in in a couple months because I need to get my drone license so I can do some commercial stuff. I need to get the Class 1 drone license. Fortunately, there's a whole drone program. Oh, man, I got a meeting next week about that. Uh, there's a whole drone program down at the uh, university, mainly for our agriculture, but the guy teaches also people to get their drone license. And so I need to go and get my and take that class with him so I can prep for the drone license. Young Zach. Yeah, drone license is really a thing. If you're going to do any kind of commercial work, literally, if you're going to take video with your drone and you're going to put it up on YouTube and hope to get a million hits and hope to get money out of it, you've got to have a class one pilot's license. Or else they'll come get you. This is a weird thing, right? I mean, I was talking about this with a class today about the history of electronic media and how it used to be whenever a new technology is introduced, whether it be television or radio especially, it just gets a little crazy. Everybody's on there. Everybody's doing stuff. It's just like this Wild West fest of the Internet is kind of like that, right? Where in the early days of the Internet, it was like anything goes, anything can happen. You can do whatever you want. You can find whatever you want. And then little by little, as people start to realize the potential of a technology, 
that's when the regulations start coming in and start clamping down. And the internet, the internet is a perfect example of that, where it used to just be a Wild West fest, and then everybody started to clamp down on copyright, piracy, uh, putting stuff behind paywalls, uh, and then all the regulations that came with the internet, like COPA and the DMCA and all this other stuff. And that's kind of the same way it is with drones, right? In the early days of drones, I've had drones for seven years, maybe? Seven or eight years? When I first started fl flying the, uh, the early Parrot, you know, that little styrofoam drone. I mean, crash it into things, and I started getting into the DJI drones. I've had four of those in my life already. And, um, you know, the, the regulations have gotten tighter and tighter and tighter until just recently, well, as a two or three, maybe four years ago, maybe longer than that, where the government required you first, you had to you had to register your drone. And then number two, and you, you should check in your, your thing, uh, Kevin 11, because uh, I think inside the box, depending on the size of your drone, maybe if it's if maybe if you just have one of those little tiny drones, it's not that big of a deal or a racing drone or something. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. But like the Mavics and the DJI Phantoms and those uh, larger ones, there should be something in the box that says register this with the uh, FAA. You'll get a little sticker that you put on your drone. And then if you're going to do any kind of commercial stuff, you have to get a license. And now, of course, used to be you could fly your drone anywhere. And now there's places that are locked off. Obviously, you can't fly over airports. But now even our own university is a no-fly zone. So many places are no-fly zones now. Almost to the point where it's, what's the point of having a drone if I can't fly where I want to fly? Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, so 250 grams is not a whole lot, but I guarantee you, I don't know, what, what drone did you get, Kevin? I registered my drones. I mean, I'm, I'm legal on everything. But yeah, oh, a DJI. Did you get the Mavic? Or did you get a Phantom? I like the Phantoms, but the, D, the little Mavics are kind of cool. Oh, the Phantom 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the one I have, right? Or is it the Phantom 4? All I know is when I first started flying, there were no... You know, there were no controls. I mean, you just basically had the radio controller and line of sight, eye, eyesight uh, of the drone. And then when I got the second one, I started modifying it to put on the, you know, a GoPro. And then I had actually it wired up to do GPS so I could program in a flight path with the GPS. And this was like early days. And now everything's right there on your app, right? You just say fly to here to here and boom, off it goes and does all the magic stuff. And you can view stuff on your on your monitor as you're flying. And it's much, much safer. And I feel much more more comfortable with that somewhere. Uh, let me see if I can find it really quick. Somewhere uh, back when I first had my uh, one of my drones, when it was first there and I was flying it down at the university, uh, and it was line of sight, I misjudged the distance between my drone and a building, and I crashed my drone on top of the building for an entire weekend. I couldn't get it down until the grounds people, um, until the grounds people had to come and go, is this your drone? I'm like, yes, thank you for getting it. It still flew. I think I have a video. Oh, no, that's not it. I think I have a video of when I crashed the drone into the building. We'll see. Let me see here. Well, I mean, come on. It wasn't that big of a deal. And again, this was like, oh, man, this would have been like eight years ago that that happened. Yep, here we go. Writing's me... not that easy. Oh, I'm stupid. I don't need to hear you. Let's flip over to the website. Uh, let's skip this ad. I think this is the one. Yeah, yeah. This is right before I crashed the drone into the building. And it's kind of it was probably a little windier than it probably should have been. But but oh, so you're if you're wondering why it is so wobbly, it is because this is the days before you had really stabilized cameras, mounted cameras on the front of your drones. So this is a um, third party mount for the GoPro. And you're flying on line of sight. So you couldn't even tilt the camera up or down. You kind of had to pre-angle the camera of where you wanted it. And so this was a Saturday. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this flyover. 
And I'm, I'm flying, and that's, so that's why you see the vibrations in there. That's not because of anything, anything else. But I'm like, okay, I'm flying, I'm flying, I'm flying. And I get right about here, and I'm like, I think I'm a little bit too close. And I kind of panicked. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of panicked, and then the next thing I know, I, I hit the wrong, uh... Oops, I shouldn't have closed that. I hit the wrong... The wrong lever, and it crashed it right into the side of the building. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> those were the days. And now, government. Government coming in and telling me what I can and can't do. Don't tell me what I can't do, government. Let's see, I probably have a couple of other drone things in there. It's been a while since I've looked at some of that drone footage. Uh, it's also been a while since I've shot drone footage, apparently. Oh, well. Here we go. This is 2014. For this. This is when I had the version 3. This is my third drone in 2014. Let's get rid of that. Oops. Still not full GPS and all that stuff that you see today. But I like it when you get way up high. I guess I should show some of the drone footage that I've shot more recently. I shot some stuff, like I said, a couple months ago, over the summer. I just love those tracking shots. Somewhere Zach has a bunch of stuff that he has shot with a drone flying over the city and everything, because when he worked for the uh, Visitor and Convention Bureau, he used to have a lot of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, I've I've crashed my drones plenty of times. I have crashed my drones plenty of times. And they've survived. I remember, and you also make sure that you've got the battery. I remember one time I was trying to take off and I didn't realize one of the batteries wasn't charged all the way and it kind of flew sideways and almost hit my neighbor when she was outside. It was not, it was not good. I've crashed drones all the time, so. That's what they're there for, right? To be crashed? All right, I'm, I'm so tired, you guys. I'm really, really tired. Do it as a hobby thing. Yeah, do it as a hobby thing. Don't expect to do much with it. Uh, although, if you do want to, there's a lot of people that get their drones licensed. There's a guy right now that has a uh, whole uh, car wrap on his car that I see driving around that says, Licensed Drone Pilot. And what they're doing it for is agriculture. Here in, here in Western Canada, well, probably all throughout the farm country, drones are really a big deal for agriculture because... Um, you can, in fact, DJI, I think, just announced a specific ag drone. You know, they're they're trying to get out of the, the I, I think, they're trying to get out of the consumer market or cut back on it. But yeah, it's like the Phantom 4 tricked out with a bunch of um, uh, agriculture cameras, like infrared cameras and that kind of stuff, so that they can check and see where the water moisture level is and a whole bunch of other things they can do some really cool things with drones in the ag market and that's why there's a, a whole course a whole degree program down at the university on it because of how the drones are being used for agriculture it's really really neat also inspecting the cattle yeah cattle farming inspecting those things roof inspections although the roof inspectors for us they actually just climbed up on the roof and banged around for a half hour yeah the thermal thermal stuff yep the flir uh, also, they're doing some cool things uh, with LiDAR, right? Where they're actually taking scans of buildings. They're flying around the buildings and taking scans of buildings and then going up and cleaning those up and creating 3D models and stuff of that. So it's all pretty amazing stuff. I wish I had more time to devote to it. But like I said, I'm tired, everybody. So I think that's where we're going to wrap it up this week. Thank you guys for hanging out. I know it was a short show. I was planning on doing some call-ins, but you guys got me talking about drones and all that other stuff. So no show tomorrow, unfortunately. Yeah, fortunately, I guess. I mean, we should all be happy that my son made it uh, as a finalist on his team to go run for the cross country in the league. He finished third at the uh, the last cross, not third overall, but third on his team. He got 16th overall. And, um, and so I think it's a good thing that he's going to the cross country. What do the sword, star, and crown by your name mean? I think if you hover over them, it tells you. It's like moderator status. Oh, so the crown is Twitch Prime. Kevin, you want to tell everybody about Twitch Prime? You know how all this stuff works. Kevin's a great little promoter for us. 
The star is that you're subscribed, so go ahead and subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything if you're a Twitch Prime member. It doesn't cost you anything. You get to subscribe every month, and Jeff Bezos has to pay us $5. It doesn't cost you a thing. It's like free money from Jeff. And then the sword means that he is a, uh, a moderator. You could have said it better yourself. I'm sorry. Go right ahead, please. Please, please tell us. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, you can hover over it. So if you see one that says first, a uh, first founder, I don't know what that means. There's all sorts of little things that trigger when you guys... Uh, Become members and subscribe and follow and all that stuff. <laughs> anyway, uh, we will be back. I'm really hoping, I was really hoping we would get to a couple of our Patreon goal levels in September. I was really hoping on it, really counting on it, because I really want to bring more of our shows that we do right here to, to Twitch. I want to bring the Major Spoilers podcast live every Tuesday night. It looks really cool. We've done some, some stuff. Oh, hey, first founder means you were one of the first top 10 to subscribe. Well, there you go. If you get a little diamond, it means you're a VIP. The J. Michael T is a VIP. Um, let's see. I don't see anything else that shows up in there. But yeah, if you guys, uh, if you enjoy the show, if you're not a patron, uh, consider becoming one. You know, a couple of bucks a month really goes a long way and uh, really helps us out as we get to more programming like the GM Roundtable, like Major Spoilers uh, Podcast Live, like maybe doing some other things live. It's all over there at Patreon.com. And I guess I'm just going to end it there. So thank you, everybody, for a wonderful little hanging out while I try to get even more tired doing this stuff. There you go. Kevin's got it right there. Yeah, get yourself some of them things, Marshall. What are you waiting for? Get yourself all those things. You can subscribe right now. Just click up there and go click on subscribe. Get up there and click on the... Um, I, I, if you're an Amazon Prime member. You can also subscribe if you're not. You can give bits. You can give bits. I think, what is it? 100 bits gets me a penny? I think that's how that works. We'll see. We'll do some gaming stuff. I've got to edit Critical Hit yet tonight. So you guys can listen to a new episode of Critical Hit. I need to take a nap. Oh, yeah. One bit equals one buckaroo. And you get ten buckaroos, you got a bonsai. You guys have a great weekend, and we will talk next time. But I guess before we do, maybe we should... Uh... Well, there's Marshall's name scrolling by. See if you can spite your name, everybody. I should put the, 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 the Twitch chat right next to this so you guys can shout when you see your names go by. There's James, there's Joyce, there's John. Casey and Kevin. I need to update this, actually. In my infinite free time, I will get these updated. Whoops. Listen to that. There's Craig and Craig, the two Craigs, as I call them. Craig and Craig. You guys ever watch Craig of the Creek? A lot of Eric's. Eric's with a C and Eric's with a K. Kirby Evans. I don't know. A couple of Mark Smiths there. All these awesome people. Love all these people. Even if some of them are no longer patrons at the moment. Love them anyway. Wilson and Will and Willie Y. Or maybe it's just Will Y. That's all there is. Thanks, everybody.
Have a great day. Hey, first time that worked. See you now. <laughs>